we are back to working on the boat and our next project is to install a hull shield on the boat. Hull shield is an electronic anti-fouling system that uses ultrasonic waves to reduce the amount of hard fouling on the bottom of boats. So we're going to install this system on the boat because we noticed that we lost some speed because of uh, barnacle that started accumulating on the running gear underneath the boat. So uh, now that we're in Florida, very warm salt water, we're hoping this system will save us some work and headache and uh, give us better fuel economy over the uh, life of the system. So uh, this hull shield is the HD100 system. It comes with four transducers. Inside the box, we have the hull shield installation kit. It gives you a lot of information on how the system works, where to place the transducers, and the different types of systems that are available. You can find all this on their website also. So we have the system that has four transducers. It's called the HD100, and the four transducer system is good to boats from 40 to 50 feet. So uh, happy hours here is only 35 feet. So uh, that's not a problem. We'll overprotect the boat, which is not a bad thing. Also in the kit comes some JB Weld, which is used to adhere the transducers to the hull and the parts that need to be protected. This is one of the transducers, small hockey puck looking system. So you would put the JB Weld on the bottom here. You would put JB Weld in the bilge or whatever you're going to attach this to, and it would be a hard attachment to the hull so that this makes good contact so the ultrasonic waves permeate throughout the hull. So the kit also comes with two extension cables if you're going to place the transducers further away from the control box. There's four transducers and here's the control box. Really simple to wire up. The transducers just plug in these blue plugs underneath here. This here is the power cable. You hook it up to a 12 volt supply battery system. And you just mount this down in the bilge or whatever is a convenient area um, that's out of the way. So uh, it's an automatic system. Once you turn it on, it will uh, continue protecting your hull as long as there's uh, sufficient 12 volt battery power. Um, if your battery starts to drain down, say over time, and you don't have it hooked up to a battery charger, the system will go into sleep mode so you don't have to worry about killing your battery completely. So um, I'm going to show you a couple of spots where we're hoping to protect the boat. We like to protect the running gear, the, the, uh, the shaft, and the propellers. Is uh, Historically, that's been the worst part of the boat as far as getting hard growth um, over time. The, uh, any paint or protection that you may put on the running gear eventually comes off. And then soon after that, you'll start getting uh, fouling on it, such as uh, barnacles. So uh, we're going to protect the two propellers and the shaft and also parts of the hull. So I'm going to show you where we're going to install these four transducers. All right, so we're down in the bilge. Here we have the transmission to the starboard motor. And you can see the shaft that goes out. Now to protect the shaft and the propeller, you need to hard mount that transducer to either the transmission or they say the motor mount uh, to get a, uh, a, a good connection as far as a hard connection where uh, ultrasonic waves will transmit to the running gear. So I found this is a good spot. We're going to clean this up. You need to sand the paint off of it and clean it and prepare it for the uh, JB Weld and the transducer that's going to stick right on there. So that's a good spot. It's relatively easy to get to from the midpoint of the bilge here. And then also on the port motor, we're going to do it on the side of the transmission bell housing for the port motor. So uh, those should be relatively straightforward. We'll sand those off, clean them up, and get the JB Weld ready. And then we're going to stick the other two pucks, uh, one in the back of the stern of the boat um, on the hull to protect the hull in the, in the rear stern of the boat. And then we'll place one a little further forward towards the, the front of the boat, probably in this area right here in front of the motor. And uh, that'll protect this portion of the hull. So uh, more than enough surface area is covered with these four pucks. Okay, to give you an idea how 
puck will be mounting here on this flat. You need to find a relatively flat surface. And I found right around here, it seems to not wobble so much. Once we get the JB Weld in there, we'll find the best spot for it, which is right around here. To secure it with the JB Weld, So we'll clean up this area here and prep that. Okay, so we're gonna use a little sanding disc to sand that paint away. Okay, we got that cleaned up, nice and shiny. That wasn't too bad. You also need to scuff up the bottom of the transducer underneath here. So I just used the same medium grit sandpaper to scuff that up. And now I'm gonna clean it with uh, some uh, carb cleaner to get any dirt debris off of both surfaces and wipe that really good with a clean rag make sure it's good condition to hold the JB weld here's what we use to clean it up cleans all unpainted metal parts and it works pretty good so I'm trying to figure out how to secure this being this is on an angle gravity is going to have that transducer try to fall off before the uh, JB weld sets so I have a bungee cord here that's going to hold it tight against the bell, the bell housing so that should keep it nice and secure until that fully cures all right we got the first transducer mounted you can see the jb weld squeezing out got the bungee cord holding it on there and now we just can't touch it for 24 hours here's another transducer that we put forward of the port motor cleaned up the fiberglass there and stuck that one on and we're going to let that one sit 24 hours also we have the port engine all prepped the transmission there clean that all up and that's the next one to go jb weld on there use quite a bit on this one it's a little uneven surface on that transmission okay we got that one on jb weld squeezing out the sides we got the bungee cord holding it securely and when you push these in, you need to do like a twisting motion back and forth just to squeeze out any air bubbles in the JB Weld. Now I'll just let that one sit. Okay, the last transducer is gonna to be tough. So we're gonna put this one all the way back behind the generator over by the stern thruster. So we can protect the uh, back by the rudders in the rear of the boat. Okay, so here we are back behind generator we need to somehow get in here I'd like to put it right next to bilge pump somewhere in there I gotta see if I can reach in there though all right clean that up pretty good a bit of a trick to get back there to squeeze along this side of the generator. My arm's in there. Good incentive to lose some weight. All right, now it's time to mount this controller. I think I found a great spot for it. Sort of fits between these two hoses right on this bulkhead between the motors and the stern of the boat. Pretty much centrally located. You got a on-off switch up top. So that'll be protected from getting bumped. And uh, instructions say to wire this directly to the battery so you have power at all times. So nobody accidentally shuts it off. You need to shut it off. You can shut it off here. So let's see. Again, you got power, ground, and I read this yellow wire here is actually a uh, an indicator light sender wire. So if you want to have a light that tells you uh, up top, say uh, by the control panel or whatever that this system is on, you could connect an LED light to this and uh, it'll indicate that the system is functioning. So we may do that in the future, but I just wanna wire this up and get the system running because we have fresh bottom paint and I don't want any barnacle. All right, it is 24 hours later. It's time to check on the transducers. They seem nice and secure. That's in there solid. So now we're going to just run these wires 
back to the controller, tidy them all up, and uh, fire up the system. All right, we got all the wires routed. I had to do some uh, rerouting of this one so I didn't have to use the uh, extension. But they're connected to the four transducers. Now we're gonna turn it on. So it takes about one minute to go through the auto calibration and then it will be functioning. So the system is functioning normally. I'm getting four blinks and then a fast blink. That means the system recognized all four transducers and it's sending out the ultrasonic pulses. So I am curious if you could actually feel it vibrate when this thing does pulse, but um, I don't feel any vibration on it. So ultrasonic is just that. You're really not gonna feel it. So uh, other than the lights flashing on the controller, you really don't know if it's working or not. So, uh, all right, well, that's it. That's our total install. And uh, I guess it took about, I'm gonna say about four or five hours for the install. Um, you know, you gotta get, you gotta prep the surfaces. You need to mount the transducers, run the wiring to the controller, wire up the controller. And uh, depending on your boat and how much, uh, you know, room you have in the bilge to move around, that's going to uh, make the difference. But um, that's bad, it's not too, too bad, you know, two days. To install it you just have to wait for the uh, JB weld to cure so that's on there nice and tight and uh, hopefully it stays there it's gonna get a lot of vibration right there from the uh, motor running so uh, we'll see how it looks when we take it out of the water next year so uh, stay tuned for that episode so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time